Okay, hello there. Welcome to the second video for the Zim Assist console and PC Marvel Rivals configuration. I'm Native, or for this channel Zim Assist, and I'm going to walk you guys today through creating a new config, importing the config, explaining you all the binds, and then from there I'm going to show you how you can customize the binds. I hope you enjoy this video. Feel free to leave it a like. It's on the forums, so if you need any help or whatever. Just be on the forums or join my Discord server. Let's now dive in and quickly set this up. What we're going to do first is you're going to open up your Zim Manager. It doesn't matter if you're on PC like me or if you're on your mobile phone, just make sure you open up your Zim Manager. Before we do so, it is very important that you're using the latest firmware. If you need to know how to update your firmware, then please look at the description of the video or go over to the links provided on the Sim Clouds page where you can see the firmware that you need to download, uh, both the firmware and the manager for Android and of course um, iOS and the PC. But let's dive in. We're going to click on the three dots here at the top, right over here. We're going to click on new config. And once we're here, you're going to go to the little search bar. If you don't have the search bar, you're going to have to drag down and find the configuration. But in this case, if you have the search bar, type down Marvel or MR, MAR is pretty much enough and go to Marvel Rivals. What I really recommend for this configuration is that you set up the device that you're playing on. Uh, unless you're on PC, if you're on, on PC, make sure you select Xbox Series X. But if you're on PS5, or you are on Xbox Series X, select Xbox Series X, same goes for PC. Now let's pretend we are on PC and we're going to set this up for our PC. We're going to click on Xbox Series or Series X, whatever you want to call it. Now very important here is whenever you're going to create your config uh, and you're going to import the config, it's going to be set as mouse keyboard controller. That's the last step right over here. Whenever we're going to set it up for either your Xbox or your PlayStation, uh, depending on if Marvel Rivals is available on the PS4. We're going to set something different, but I'm going to show you guys. Anyways, let's go to the last step and click on new. Now that we're at, at the page, we're going to click on no. And we're going to click on the little pencil here in the left top to edit our config. I assume you have already copy and pasted the, like the, the, the code. And if you have done so, you're going to go over here to paste and you're going to click on full config. Once this is loaded, it's going to say config applied. And once we save, it might say, based on what you have selected, that it's going to change the connection method. You can see changing connection method. And it's currently has set it for the PC. Now, just as an update, if you're playing on PS5 or you're playing on Xbox Series X uh, or Xbox Series S, you're going to have to change this. So you're going to go over here to mouse keyboard controller. You're going to go back two tabs, three actually for PS5, scroll down, make sure your update rate is set to standard. Or if you're playing on Xbox Series X, PS4, you're going to controller, Xbox, PS4. Standard here again is the same. I've tested the config on both 250 Hertz, 500 Hertz and 1000 Hertz. And even though 1000 Hertz feel ni feels nice, it doesn't affect aim assist or performance in any way. So keep it at standard. This is just your standard console, right? We're going to go back to mouse keyboard controller. The reason I set this on the PC is that it allows us to have access to the mouse and keyboard. Really quick, before we start editing, you can see that I have the navigate mode active and you might be wondering, how do you enable that? If you go back and click on the arrow at the left top, then click on the three dots and go to your global settings, you can see the button customize navigate mode. When we go over here, you can see that I have set a custom button for my navigate mode. Yours most likely will say, bracket to the left and bracket to the right if you're on mouse and keyboard and it will set your option keys and your uh, share key or your option key and middle uh, faceplate key if you're on PlayStation or Xbox Series X. 
What is very important here is that we're setting this up for our keyboard. So click on the first button and select the key you want to do. Like I, I like to use F6, so I press F6 and I select it. And then you do the same thing for the second key. Once you have done this, you can just simply press this key to disable or enable the navigate mode. Let's edit our config again and go for the things that are important. To start with the hip aim. What I've done is I wanted to create a as natural and as standard feeling mouse as possible. Something that feels like a mouse, that's smooth, that allows me to do micro adjustments, all these kind of little things. And at the same time, keep the ability to track in these kind of things. So I've gone for 37.5 at 11 precision on standard and 100 response time. It might be that your config is set to this, but if it's not, you're going to click the arrow on the left if, if, it's, if it's on the left. But in your case, if it's, if it's like this, you're going to click on the arrow to the right and you're going to have the right settings. If it doesn't, set precision to 11.0, response to 100 and easing to 7.5. Very important here, we've gotten a Y scale. I've calculated the Y scale to be oh, about precise and, and perfect at 93. If your Y scale, so your up and down movement, whenever you move the mouse up and down feels too fast, lower this. If it feels too slow, increase this. In the end, you want to go for something that feels about the same speed as your horizontal, so your left to right movement. Don't touch the quantization. What this does is it will slow down the aim um, and keep you better locked on to your targets, which is with the way the aim assist works in Marvel Rivals, a very neat feature. Just really quickly, I play at 800 DPI, so I recommend you playing at 800 DPI. If you're not used to doing this, then increase the DPI to this DPI of your mouse. But if you want to play and try this out, then decrease the DPI of your mouse to 800 and then use the same here. If you're going to increase the number here, you need to increase it on your mouse as well. Let's continue on. The ADS, we don't really have to worry about. This is just from whenever we're using sniper based uh, characters. But let's go over to the binds. I'm going to go from top to bottom just to explain you guys what is happening. At the top, we have gotten the general aim key. You not, don't play with this, you don't change this. This is the key that we're using in order to move our mouse. It's kind of what, you know, allows us to move around. Then the left mouse at the top right here is an aim assist booster. This is a left stick booster and at the same time a right stick booster. This is an analog booster that will boost your aim assist and it will just help you be a little bit more on point. At the same time, we've got an, a magnitude booster. These magnitudes, these reds and blues, these can be used for recall, which we uh, use often in games like Apex Legends or Call of Duty. Uh, but in this case, we're using this as an aim assist booster, and this only affects your aim. So this is not going to affect your left stick. Then we have gotten the RT. Right here, we've got an AA-B. This stands for aim assist boost, or boosted aim assist, kind of the way you want to see it for yourself. What this does, whenever we start fry, like clicking and holding the left mouse button, we start having boosted aim assist. Then we've gotten a cursor. We'll tell you guys about the cursor in a little bit, but let's go down first. We've got an unhealth or like a release. Whenever we, re we release the left mouse button, our fire button, it will stop boosting the aim assist. Then we've gotten a plethora of um, right mouse. So this is all aim assist booster. These will take your screen a little bit. And now it's very important if you do want to use this, which is pretty great, Go for it and, and uh, use the um, thing here. But what is very important, if you do not want to have any shaking, you lower these numbers. So you can pretty much just lower the timers. So this one is set to 60 right here, 60, 30, 30, 30, and lower all of these timers to five. So you go in there, you click on it, and you're going to use the minus so right here to set it to five. And the lower that number, the less shake there will be. But that shake is very important for your aim assist to be really consistent. So it's really going to be about what you like to play around with the most. Then outside of these boosters, we have gotten the uh, B. This button, there's no crouch button in Marvel Rivals. And the B button is tied to your 
um, if you're playing Punisher, it's the button with which you interact with the zip line. So I put that on my interact key. At the same time, I made it a double bind, which allows me to uh, interact as X, but also use the B button. So it's kind of like a, a double bind. The RB is one of your abilities. So I believe that's the third ability. Then what I do is I like to B hop and there's no B hopping in this game. You can try to set up a macro and I haven't really succeeded in getting it working. Um, I've had some people testing it and this macro works perfectly fine inside of Apex Legends and Call of Duty, but it does not work inside of uh, Marvel Rivals. So what I would really recommend is you leave this to the scroll wheel um, and just scroll down every time you want to B hop. Then you have gotten the A. These A keys right here, these are left stick boosters. They will trigger your aim assist a little bit more on the rotational side. Now, just as an important thing, there is no rotational aim assist in Marvel Rivals, or maybe there's very little, but not enough to be boosted. But this is just a nice thing. It's not going to affect your movement in any sort of way. Q, again, is a ability. This is also your aim button, but since there's not really an aim button in the game, I've set this to Q, but we get to the customization part in a second. R is going to be your reload key. It's also an interact key. V is going to be a um, menu-based button. Don't worry about it. We're not going to use this one too often. W, again, has gotten a booster from moving. And with the top one, we're prioritizing forward movement. So if there's the, like in Apex, for example, you have a death slide whenever you don't move fast uh, forward fast enough, this is what does that. One and two for me are to select uh, and change weapons. So if I play Punisher and I'm playing with his assault rifle and I want to switch to a sh shotgun, I either press one or two. Uh, we're going to get into those cursor buttons in a second. The dot right here is the AA boosters. These ones you don't touch. You just keep those as they are right here. Uh, and you leave those running. These are what, what constantly handles your aim assist and is constantly actively trying to do things better. Again here, we've got the reverse quote. This quote is above your tap key and below your escape key. If you don't have this button, I highly recommend you change it. In my case, I ping with space, so you might want to change this button as well. So for example, your middle mouse button or whatever. The tap key is the, um, you know, the double window icon. This is to open up your scoreboard. And in Marvel Rifles, you want to hold down the key in order to see the menu. Then we've gotten the escape key. This will open up the menu. We've gotten the enter key, which allows you to type in game. We've gotten another enter key, which is also necessary uh, for the game to type um, or to open up the scoreboard as an additional. We've gotten caps lock. Whenever you hold down caps lock, you can start to uh, change a character, select a different character you want to play with. Shift is another ability. I believe this is the second ability that you can use. Then we've gotten the left alt again. For me, I kind of like to have this as an additional bind. I use this to exit out of the menus. And then we've gotten a couple binds that don't have a thing. What I really recommend is you don't connect a controller as these binds are set to the controller. But if you do connect a the controller, then change these binds to your left stick or to your right stick uh, so that they're not consistently being pressed, which might fuck around with your game, which you do not want. Let's go really quickly over customization, or at least let's go over to the, over the uh, cursor mode and then go over customization. What I have done is the moment you are going to press F1, um, F5, or F12, you're going to enable the cursor mode. The same goes for the escape key and the character selection. What this does is whenever you are in Marvel Rivals and you open up the menu and there wanna be a cursor mode, you wanna be able to use your, um, your mouse inside the menu. You will have to pick up your controller and there you go. I like to, you know, just be honest here and have the ability for you to have a cursor mode, but at the same time, go all the way at the top, the cursor mode has gotten an A button. This simply allows us to press at the menu button and have that access. Otherwise, it's using RT and you wouldn't be able to click on buttons. So the cursor mode is simply just there to replace the need of the controller in the menus and simply allow you to go through the menu as you wish. You do that with F1, F5, um, F12, Escape, and Caps Lock. Now let's go over to the customization part of the convic, because I'm most likely sure you're going to be wanting to change some binds. If you do not like to jump with your scroll wheel, 
you're most likely want to change that. So what I really recommend is you click on the icon here at the left. Once you do that, it's an instant and then change it to space. You will see that space will start to glitch. So what I usually do is I try to hold it down and then the moment it's visible, I click it. And now it's that space bar. But at the same time, you want to make sure you're also going to change the second scroll wheel to the space bar. So again, try to hold it and click it. Boom, there we go. We've gotten it now both set to the space bar. Now I can most likely uh, see that you're, you're not going to ping with your uh, space. So you might want to change this to the middle mouse button or your preferred uh, key. Let's say you don't have the double quote key. What I really recommend is most likely changing this to, let's say left control, your normal uh, crouch binder, the way you would want to crouch and keep the left alts in. These will just close the cursor mode. So if you press left alt, closes the cursor mode and done. The left windows key is for your console to open up the thing. As a PC user, you can simply go over here, so click on the content, kind of close to where the icons are and change this to inactive. You're not gonna need this button and there's no need for it. Same with the cursor mode. I most likely would more recommend you to just Set your navigate mode whenever you're using the mouse keyboard controller input on your uh, PC, then doing so. Same thing here, you will go and disable anything that has cursor. In it. So we will disable this bind. We will disable, um, we will say like keep the caps lock in. I will keep that in just as a, a, a neat thing. Keep the escape key in as well. Um, and then, but kind of only disable this uh, curse right here and then. Uh, see it as a thing you can use. Anyways, going over to a few of the last binds, right? Um, we've got some, some of these things set up. Now, again, you're going to change these buttons right here to your preferred keys. It's not really about me making it easier for you or whatever, but to give you the, the little breakdown, right? You click the button, you change it to the key you want, and you're just going to go in-game and look at the settings of each, each bind and see what works best for you. That's the easiest way for me to explain. Now, let's say you do need any additional help. You want this to be configured. You have no clue how it goes. And this tutorial is not helpful enough. Then there's the other option of going over to the My Discord server, contacting native. It's $30 the first time. So you have tech support as well. And then it's $25 per time that you need help. And it can just help you for an hour, two hours, based on the amount of help you need. And we configure the entire configuration to your needs. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I hope this was enough of a use for you guys to you know know how to use certain things how certain things work and i hope you're going to enjoy the last part of the um, uh, the post where you see some of the gameplay that i um, had while playing with the, the playing the game so again i hope you enjoyed this one and uh, till next time